Alright, hold up, watch this. <laughs> what? With no quality loss. Oh, let's do it again. Ah. And this is on the Sigma 16 millimeter f1.4, going from this to this, still in 4K with no loss. That is magic, people. Magic. End of the video. That's all you need to know. Magical in a Sony camera. Done. What is going on, people? Leo here from Creative Tech Lab. As you could guess from those first couple of seconds, today we're talking about Sony Clear Image Zoom. As you may or may not able to guess, because I feel like this is a feature that is not talked about enough on Sony cameras. So let's get into it. But first, just the regular YouTube pleasantries here. Welcome to Creative Tech Lab. My name is Leo. If it is that you're new here, please go ahead and consider hitting the subscribe button. We talk a lot about run and gun videography here on the channel, as well as some more creative disciplines to come as we move along. So hit that subscribe button, hit the notification button. Y'all gonna like it. All right, so if you've seen any of my videos before, I might seem a little bit more hype, a little bit more energetic in this one because I feel like I need to match the energy of the enthusiasm I feel for this particular feature. So just a little bit of backstory on clear image zoom. I don't know if it's because I'm just getting into the whole interchangeable lens world or maybe I just missed it, but I did do some research and realized that I just don't feel like enough people are talking about it. So the homie Geary, who is, you guys may know as the everyday dad, was on Twitter the other day, call him Gary, because that's what Twitter tells me his name is, which confuses me sometimes. Sometimes I think it's Gary Vaynerchuk, but that's a whole nother story for a whole nother time. Let's stay on topic. So, Gary says something about clear image zoom. I've heard the term before, never really knew what it meant, so I went to Google it, and oh my God, <laughs> mind blowing. So doing in, that little bit of research. Let's talk about the two most familiar ways that cameras zoom. There's your optical zoom, which is inside your lens. Those are your zoom lenses. One second. But something like this on the RX100, physically moving back and forth there. Or this, this is the Tamron. You could see the inside. This has an internal zoom, ring, zoom there. Same thing with the 18 to 105 there, internal. But the physical components of the camera is moving in order to create that depth of field being closer or further away. That's optical zoom. Then you have what is a digital zoom. You find this a lot on like your iPhones and stuff like that that will have more of a digital zoom or like when it is that you crop in on a photo. Now, most people, any kind of professional work, most people that I follow here on YouTube and including myself, never, ever, ever really want to utilize a digital zoom because there's only so many pixels that are in the image that is there and when you zoom in, you definitely degrade the quality. Now, I think that's part of the reason why in sometimes hearing about clear image zoom, it just kind of whooshes over people's head and I feel like people need to talk about it a little bit more with a little bit more enthusiasm. Now, to be fair, Jason Vong has done a video on this, but I don't feel like he really titled it well enough to really say that you could turn zooms into primes. He kind of gets into it, but he's also mainly talking about how this works on full frame. And I feel like this actually works even a little bit better on APS-C, I'll tell you why here in a little bit. But I don't feel like enough attention was being brought to the situation, so I just need to talk about it here again. So the way that clear image zoom works is not a digital zoom. You have very, very, very little quality loss. What Sony says is they don't really tell you exactly how it works because it's, I guess, a secret, but they're cropping in a little bit onto the sensor itself and still trying to utilize all the pixels that are on the sensor, which is why you get little to almost no quality loss there in your image, as you could see in the start here. And then I'll roll some B-roll over here, but as you can see here, I think I have one clip here in the club of me zooming in. This is probably some of the worst conditions to use this in, but I was using the Sigma F1.4 and eventually the um, Nifty 50 F1.8 inside the club, but I was able to change those from equivalent focal lengths of 24 up to 36. And let me do the math there. 48 and the 50 could turn from, well the 50 is already at a 75, but you could turn that all the way up to a 150 if it is that you're in HD. So let's go ahead and see how we set it up here in the camera. 
right, so just to show you here, I came behind the camera here with the RX100 just to show you the menu. So we're gonna go into menu. We're gonna go into your second camera page. We're gonna scroll over to folder five and you're gonna have your zoom setting. As you could see here, you could do a optical zoom only, which means you could only zoom in with the optical zoom like we spoke about before or you could turn on clear image zoom, digital zoom, again, you wanna leave alone. So you set that to clear image zoom there. And then what I've also done is coming over into my custom keys, I have set the top button here to the zoom. So whenever it is that I do have a prime lens on there, I could just hit the top button there and go ahead and zoom in. Now, once you have it set up, that can be pretty amazing. I can tell you right now from shooting on the A6400, the Sigma 16 millimeter is hands down my favorite lens to shoot with. It's what I'm shooting on here now, but sometimes I might be out and I do want to punch in a little bit and I have a prime lens on there, which is the downside to primes. Obviously they give you phenomenal picture quality, but sometimes you do want to zoom, zoom in and you don't want to change, stop, change out lens or whatever, you might miss what it is that you're shooting. This gives you the opportunity to go ahead and do that. Now, in terms of just actual things there, you can, in 4K, you can only crop in one and a half times. So the Sigma 16 millimeter is equivalent to 24 millimeters on a crop sensor camera. Then if you're shooting in 4K, you could crop in another one and a half times, which would give you a 36, which gives you a cool like street photography or street videography type of lens or whatever. But if it is that you're shooting in HD, then you could crop in two times into the sensor with again, little to no loss there. So you could turn the Sigma um, equivalent 24 mil into almost a 50 mil there at 48, which is super, super, super helpful, especially it is when you have the camera out, you're vlogging, wanna catch some B-roll, wanna punch in a little bit, boom, you've done it there. The other lenses that I do have, which is probably the lens that I use a lot when I'm just out and about right now, this is the Tamron 17 to 28, which the knock against this lens, even full frame, or even using here on the APS-C lens, is that it does have like a shorter zoom range, like it's only 11 millimeters from 17 up to 28, but on a crop sensor, that's equivalent of about 25 to 42. But then your zoom range becomes a lot more utilized here with this feature, because you could go from what was equivalent of a 42 to then going all the way up to a 63 roundabout, if I got my math right. And then you could go all the way up to 80 something here with this lens. So you could get a way better reach out of this lens than you could if it was on another body. And I wanna touch on a point there real quick. On your full frame camera, so like on the A7 III or even on the A7S II or whatever, you're dealing with about 20 megapixels there and for a lot of people, for a lot of full frame shooters, the first thing that they're gonna do is gonna go into crop mode. But even on that full frame sensor, when it is that you go into crop mode and you're not using all of that sensor, then you've kind of about half the megapixels. The reason why I said earlier in the video that it is a lot more useful on an APS-C lens is because you're already in crop mode but still with your full megapixels. So when it is that you're cropping in on the sensor with the clear image zoom, you're definitely not losing as much as it is that you're losing on the full frame lens that's already in crop mode and has cropped in to the sensor to begin with to then get you the, the, um, the clear image zoom. So that's another advantage there for the APS-C lenses, which I think is something that people definitely do not talk enough about. And just to talk things out there again, like even the 18 to 105, which, um, on the crop lens becomes about, was that 28 or 27 to about 150-ish there, can now go up to 200 and even 300. Big deal for a big zoom range like this. And then even on the RX100, this is an equivalent 24 to 200 zoom range, but you can turn on clear image zoom and get even more than the 200 out of this little pocket camera. So again, mind blowing, <laughs> big type feature. Can't say enough about it. Feels like people need to talk more about it some more. I was not trying to clickbait you in the channel. Hopefully this draws your attention to it as a Sony shooter or if you're thinking about getting a Sony, 
camera or if you're thinking about getting a particular type of lens, a prime lens or a lens with a shorter zoom range like the Tamron here and you're like, oh man, it's not enough, you could use this feature to change a lot of those things. So I wanted to bring my energy and my bring my attention to it and hopefully brought your attention to it and maybe change your mind if it did and if this video helped you out in any way shape or form please go ahead and drop it a like if you didn't like the video please go ahead hit the dislike button two times and then drop me a comment in the comment section and let me know why it is that you didn't like it so i can improve we like our criticism constructive around here and as you can see from all these lenses we have a couple more lens reviews coming up i have a few more comparisons coming up so hit that subscribe button, hit the notification button. We have a lot more content coming out here on the channel and you don't wanna miss it. And I will catch you in the next one. Peace.